Hey everybody, it's Marty Smith from FullTiltPokerReport.com. I'm actually in a tournament here at the very moment that I've uh, recorded this screen for you. And I wanted to go through a play in further review of Her Dan Harrington's M-Zone calculations. I put out a few videos and a few articles in regards to the M-Zone and how you use that in tournaments. And I got myself into a situation where I can show you a specific example of that. And I hope this helps. I'm just going to make this short on this one hand here. Um, in the uh, second edition of Dan Harrington's book, he goes through something called the M zone. And basically, it's a calculation of where you are uh, in, a, in comparison to everyone else's stack size, what your stack size is stacked up against your competitors. And you also take into effect the small blind, the big blind, the antes, and how many players are left. And it came to a situation here where I was on the button with Jack Ace offsuit. And these two players had both been playing a very feisty last uh, good half an hour. Oh, by the way, there's about uh, 12 players left. And uh, we are headed for the final table. I think there was three or 400 players. It's just a five buck tourney. But I haven't done, I haven't had enough time to play any multi-table tournaments on full tilt. So this is uh, maybe the third or fourth that I've tried and I, ha and I happen to make the final table. And I'm still building my bankroll, so I'd like to stick to the small entry fee um, tournaments. Now, even though it's only five bucks to get in, I do find that when the competition gets narrowed down to last two or three tables, you are still up against good players, uh, people who care about how much they win. Um, they might be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more flippant with, uh, you know, re-raising and all ends and that. But still, a lot of the players here are uh, pretty competitive, and I have marked some of them as such. As I was saying, these two players to my left were both very aggressive. I, ha I was re-raised and taken out of a few pots where I was just trying to take the blinds. And uh, both of them were aggressive with me, and I had to lay down several hands. One I got away with, but two or three times I lost a good chunk of my stack. And here I am with a decent hand now, and I'm about to um, play this hand out for you here because a decision does come up in that uh, one of the players again bounces back on me. And I'm just going to show you my reaction to that because he goes all in. Now, here I am. I've raised 8,000. He has re-raised 72,000, making the total pot 88,000. It's the balance of my stack to call 42,000. The thing is, the blinds are 2,000 and 4,000. The antes are 500. Um, there's about 12 players left. So right away, I know that I am in, in the red zone. And the red zone, in regards to Dan Harrington's M zone calculations, I'm just going to show you here how this positions me. Here are the blinds. I've, I've keyed them in. I have this uh, spreadsheet here. Every pot is worth 12,000. Now, this is based on the fact that if I were to fold, where would I be? And I'd be left with 41,000 in chips. And my M zone calculation, based on the amount of players left in the tournament, would leave me solidly in the red zone. In the red zone, your range of hands skyrockets. You are basically looking for anything with a little chemistry, um, two-gapped connectors, flush cards, one high card, any ace, things like that. So chances are you are going to have, uh, with when you are in the M zone, you are going to have to be extremely aggressive. Now, at the same time, I don't have a lot of time to look at more cards here. And another thing I have to take into consideration is, am I going to get a better hand than Ace Jack? In addition to that, having these players taken pots away from me before, I can put this player as well on a range of hands too. I'm not necessarily thinking that I'm dominated here, although that is a distinct possibility. However, I do think that his range of hands are wider than that. I'm completely hoping that he has a, a lower pair. If he has ace-king or ace-queen, I'm in trouble, of course. But based on my 
me being left in the red zone here, this is probably a much better situation than I am going to see in the next few hands where I'm just going to be blinded out anyway. As I said, each pot is 12,000. And, you know, the rounds are so expensive that I, I have to really take into consideration, am I going to see a better hand than this? What is this player's range of hands? And I automatically knew that I would be left in the red zone. So to me, this was actually an easy call. And I'm just going to play it through and I'll show you what happens here. This is pretty much the best situation that I could have hoped for. And it was uh, typical of what uh, this player would have re-raised me with. Had he been a bigger pair, uh, he might have you know, tried to trap me to get all in. But anyway, I think that um, I put him on a hand with a pair because of his aggression. He really wanted to not see a flop on here, and I, I got that impression. So we play it out. I actually hit on my hand. Ace jack here, he's queen. And I avoided a 10 and a king. So what happens here is that I get into a decent chip position at 105. But if you can, if I'm just going to show you down here, even at 105, here's the thing. At a, I would, there's 12 players left. Average stack after that hand is 65,000. So I'm still not much better than that, than average, but you know, I'm in decent shape to make the final table. And I do go on to make the final table in this, by the way. Um, but the money really doesn't start until, you know, six, fifth, where you get a couple hundred bucks. And that's really what I'm shooting for here. Whether I finish in 12th, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th even, it's really not much difference. It's basically just uh, coffee money. Well, Maybe not coffee money. Maybe you can buy a special latte at Starbucks. But the thing is, is that yeah, I tend to have to look ahead and see, you know, how the money moves up. If I was at the final table, there were five players left and another move up. I may have very well folded that hand if it meant a couple hundred bucks. Now, and I'm saying that in relation to my bankroll because I don't have a big bankroll here. I started with 50 bucks. It's... I don't know, three or four hundred bucks now. But if you ever read any of my articles on bankroll management, this is one of those considerations in that, you know, you have to be playing for your bankroll as well as first place. It's one, it's one thing to, to play for first place, but it's also another uh, prudent thing to be playing for your bankroll. And I always uh, point that out to players who saying, should I be going for it or not? Yes, you should, but you should also keep your bankroll in um in consideration here. This was a little bit about uh, Dan Harrington's M zone calculations. I have this um, little spreadsheet here at uh, pokerbookreport.com. You can go download it free there. And I often have it open when I get into situations like this. And uh, you know, it's a good exercise as to the lessons that Dan Harrington uh, has in his books. And of course, if you haven't read those, those are must reads for tournament poker. And I actually went ahead and laid some of this out here so that I could see what he was talking about and get a good understanding of it. And man, at 3.4, you were looking, like I said, you'd be looking at hands like 7, 9, 10, 9, 5, 6 suited, things like that to be going all in. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is Marty Smith, FullTiltPokerReport.com. Remember, you can download this spreadsheet at uh, PokerBookReport.com as well. Okay, guys, take care. Good luck at the tables. Ciao.